What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual stream yard studio with the one and only Dr. Jack Cruz. Dr. Jack, what is going on, my brother? Hey, how are you? Just hanging out here at the beach, uh, getting rays. <laughs> That's what's so awesome about Dr. Jack Cruz. As, as I told him off air, I think he is the first podcast on the Jay Campbell podcast where he is shirtless, which is absolutely epic. He's in uh, Destin, Florida, the white sands of the Gulf beaches. I'm very familiar with it myself. And uh, he is soaking in some rays, uh, enjoying his uh, opportunity to talk with me today. And obviously my audience is going to be blessed for it. So thank you, my brother. No problem. Anytime. Awesome. Okay. So most of you guys know who he is, but if you don't, I'll just briefly give you his bio, uh, respected neurosurgeon and CEO of Cruise Longevity Center. He's a health, which is a health and wellness company dedicated to helping patients avoid the healthcare burdens typically encountered as one ages, a member of the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, age management medicine group. He's helped pioneer a totally new medical field, which is quantum mitochondrial health which has allowed him to help tens of thousands of patients and members to reverse chronic diseases and achieve optimal health. And building on his deep medical expertise, he has also built a vibrant community dedicated to helping people build critical thinking skills and to be able to see the world as it really is, challenging the myths and false conventional wisdom that prop up our sick care medical system and our financial system and our media and our governments. They're all the same thing, aren't they? Absolutely. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the age old problem problem between centralized and decentralized and people need to realize that's where the battle line both for health and finances uh need to be waged going forward yeah and so you know before we get into our talking points uh let me just ask you because obviously we find ourselves in very interesting times um <laughs> what is your take on where we are obviously this podcast is may 20th thursday um Again, you're in Destin right now. I just came back from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico on Monday night. So I was at the beaches with my shirt off for six days in a row too. Um, Jack, the world is screwed right now. I mean, but again, you place your consciousness on a place of I'm creating a heaven on earth through my words, thoughts, and actions versus like I'm focused on you know being in victimhood, dealing with the current duality aspect of this third dimension. Um, so I, you know, I'm sure your answer is going to be amazing, but you know, just your thoughts on where we find ourselves right now on planet earth. Um, I'm going to be probably shocking to you, Jay, a little bit. I I'm actually pretty optimistic. Yeah, me too. I think uh, what's getting ready to happen. We're in the fourth turning mm -hmm. uh, economically in the country. Right. We're also, we also have, probably 300 million people that are fed up with allopathic medicine as an institutions. All institutions are currently failing. Paradigms 
that have been entrenched for a long period of time are now being questioned not only by the educated, but even the uneducated. Why? Because the return on equity that they're getting both on finances and health, let's face it, for at least 50 years have been suboptimal. Right. So if you're interesting in living an optimized life, uh, you got to say maybe uh, with the changes that are coming, there's going to be something beneficial out there, you know, not only for the boomer generation, which I'm a part of, but the Gen Ys, the Gen Xs, and the millennials. The millennials you know, are pretty nihilistic right now. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of work with millennials lately, especially on the crypto side. Uh, and telling them there's no reason for you to be nihilistic. Um, right. You need to be very positive and realize that you can always change your reality with a change in thought. The change in thought is something we all control. The key, the key is ideation without uh, execution leads to deletion. So what does that mean? It means when you get a good idea, you got to execute on it. You got to do something. It's about action. Exactly. And when you put action behind the ability to critically think, you become Superman. You become unstoppable. So I'm, I'm bullish. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, as am I. I mean, uh, you know, after I came back from Peru in 2019, I went from being the, you know, TRT, testosterone optimization guy to the razor vibration guy, right? So this is all I talk about now is quantum, you know, everything, quantum consciousness, the quantum field, the quantum aspect of existence. So you're like the perfect guy to have this conversation today. And, and, you know, and I followed you for a while um, in various aspects and various, uh, you know, modalities and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, both of us have made our bones in the allopathic medical space in a lot of ways, you as a physician, me as a researcher and an author. Uh, but now obviously we rally pretty much against it because as you said, it's beholden to, you know, antiquated systems and, and processes and whatnot. It's all, it's all got to evolve. So the first question or the first bullet point that you and I are going to hit today, and again, this conversation could go a lot of different directions, uh, is how to optimize time, your health and your wealth. And you have a great comment. You say, if your health is quantum, your currency must be crypto. So Correct. I think this, I think, I think your answer is very important on where this conversation goes. And I also think that not enough people actually understand crypto well enough to truly dabble in it. You know, they see this stuff about Bitcoin and Ethereum and Elon Musk and all this other BS, but, you know, elaborate on that point. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, most people don't fail to realize that nature is the first in only true decentralized network that showed up on planet earth from that uh, area of complex life evolved 650 million years ago. We are designed to be plugged into that. What is the key with a decentralized network? It's very simple to understand. It means that there's nobody between us and spaceship earth. We travel through space on this spaceship. We're optimized for it. We're optimized for terrestrial sunlight. We're optimized for the water cycles. We're optimized for magnetic flux on the planet. Those are the, the three-legged stool that tie the quantum health. What people don't realize is after the financial crisis in 2008, where a lot of people were hurt, both in, in all generations, let's face it, right. for a different yeah. reason, uh, we had a, a guy that uh, is synonymous named Satoshi Nakamoto look at the financial institution and say, you know what we need? We need a decentralized monetary network to store our value so that it can transcend space and time. And I mean that literally. We had gold for 5,000 years, but anybody, if you want to transfer $5 million or $10 million in gold, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And it's not easy to do. With Bitcoin, uh, it's really simple to do. Um, but the, the real key issue is on the mitochondrial side, when you, you're talking to people about mitochondrial medicine, and how quantum biology interfaces with that. What are, you, what are you really trying to impact to your patients or your public? You're actually trying to tell them how to gain more time, more freedom, and more health. You're trying to increase their health span so that the return on equity is there, that you have more time to spend. What are you doing on the crypto side with Bitcoin is exactly the same thing. You don't realize that you know Warren Buffett took 56 years to make the money he's got. Everybody thinks that he's amazing, but if you fundamentally look what he did, he looked at a compound calculator and said, all I have to do is have enough time, get stocks that return between 5 and 10% a year, 
and never lose money in any of those stocks. And, you know, eventually I'll be a billionaire, a billionaire. And he was correct. He did that. There's another part of that story that Bitcoin fed off. Most people understand time compounding from time. But here's the other issue. What happens if you had an asset that returns 230% per year? You know what that means? It means you can shrink time. Yeah, so exactly. if you have a, a shitty job right now, or um, let's use me as an example. If you have a physician's job where you know your pay is going down, the hospital's pounding in the bottom left and right, and they want you to take call for free so that you can destroy your health under artificial light, 5G, non avmf all the jazz that's out there, and they don't pay you for that risk, is that is that a, a risk-benefit ratio you want to make? Or could you use something like Bitcoin to actually innovate a solution out of a job that now more doctors kill themselves with suicide and more doctors are burning out than record rates? And since I'm an old dog closing in on 60, I remember what medicine was like 30, 35 years ago when doctors didn't kill themselves. We had great lives. That all changed about 10, 15 years ago when doctors went from being independent businessmen to now having blue checks on Twitter who are working for somebody else. So it means, it means they're somebody else's bitch. They're an employee. And basically, they're not allowed to have an opinion or come on Jay's show to say truly how they feel because it will reflect badly on their employer. And believe it or not, they have NDAs now if you go get a job out there to do that. And I reject all that. And the reason I reject it is because I believe, just as nature tells us, there should be nobody between us and the truth. That's what nature is all about for mitochondria. And it turns out that's what medicine should be or your money should be for you. Nobody should get in between you and tell you how to do anything. It's it's actually preposterous. And what Satoshi Nakamoto's uh, um, coding did is create, it mimics what happens in biology? Like when you hear me talk about biology in other areas, you'll hear I talk about the circadian mechanism and how everything is controlled by that mechanism. It turns out Bitcoin actually has a circadian oscillator in it as well. It has many of the things in it. For example, you know, when I talk about um, metabolic rate in medicine, the metabolic rate is tied to T3, T4 status from the thyroid hormones. What people don't realize, the hash rate in Bitcoin is an exact duplicate of the metabolic rate in the organism I call Bitcoin. So when it's optimized, you can do really well and do things in the coding algorithm change this, like all the, the crap FUD that you heard about this week and FUD stands for fear, uncertainty and doubt from like Elon Musk trying to tell you all the crap about, you know, the energy side of Bitcoin. It's clear that he didn't understand it. He doesn't understand it. Bitcoin is probably the, if you compare the energy uses for Bitcoin compared to the banking industry, it's like comparing a nuclear war to a street fight. It's not even close. Right. Right. The banking industry uses way more energy. But you have to remember, the Federal Reserve is a system that's been in power since 1913. It controls most of our lives in ways that most of us don't understand. It's almost like Pinocchio. And when you realize that COVID was kind of a compliance test for an economic reset, most people don't even realize. Right now, we have 40% monetary inflation because... The government is printing money. It's like right. it never turns it off. So what is that doing to all of us? It's decreasing our value of money. So what does that mean? Through space and time, we can't do it. And I tell people when I teach them about uh, Bitcoin and crypto, look, what good is having a ton of money if you don't have biologic time in which to use it? So that's why these things are linked. Health and wealth are linked because when you understand mitochondrial medicine, it it it, in a decentralized system, one of the key features is from a thermodynamic perspective, mm -hmm. it's the most thermodynamically efficient way to transfer whatever asset we're talking about. In terms of health, it's actually the quantum biology. It's light water magnetism. In, in um, Bitcoin, it's actually monetary energy. It's, it enables to say that the money today will be worth 50 years from now what it's worth now. In fact, it's probably going to be worth quite a bit more in 50 years when it comes to Bitcoin because it's early in its adoption rate. I mean, you saw a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff to unpack. I, I, I want to go back to what you were saying about, you know, being an employee, you know, I call it a wage slave. Yep. And you know, I've said, I've said this many times before, it doesn't matter whether you're the CEO or the mailroom clerk, you are literally, 
nothing more than an employee ID number. And that ID number can be replaced on a whim, you know, especially by a bean counter chief financial officer or, you know, accountant that runs that company who says, oh, Jack Cruz and Jay Campbell, those are the two highest paid guys in the company. Not anymore. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do, how many studies, how many peer review, you know, how many Nobels, it doesn't matter. Actually, with, with medicine right now, it comes down to, are you an acceptable mouthpiece on social media? Or are you too controversial That's for the organization that you're working for? I mean, we saw it with uh, Parler, how they got yeah. deplatformed. And I think right. when people understand any place that can get deplatformed means it's centralized. It means that there's somebody controlling it. And I believe that I should be able to come on a podcast or get on social media and when you ask me a controversial question, I should be able to answer it because it's my opinion. It doesn't reflect on my employer. But guess what? That's not how the centralized system works. Right. It's also the reason why you hear Janet Yellen come out and talk shit about uh, Bitcoin when she always tells people, oh, it's been used to launder money for drugs. I'm like, there's been no currency more than in the world that's been used in the American dollar to launder money for drugs. Right. Uh, are, is she really kidding me? But guess what? She right, knows right. that she's talking to obedient idiots through social media channels. Right. Part of part of that based on FCC regulations designed to dumb our brains down with the exactly. use of alien light technology, you know, which is blue light and non-native EMF. Jack, I love you, bro. This is going to go in many directions. And obviously you do not give a shit. So either do I, and I am heavily blackballed, suppressed and shadow banned on YouTube. I should have a lot more people following me. And I think I do, but it doesn't matter. So here we go. So you just said blue light, you know, alien light, like who in your opinion is the architect of the blue light? I mean, I know it's an opinion question, but you're the right guy to ask. So who is it? Uh, that, that is a good question. The, I'm going to give you an answer. You're probably not going to like, I'm going to tell you mother nature. Okay. Now, do you think Mother Nature is the cosmic wand for some other entity that may be uh, the wizard behind the curtain? I right. I'll give you that. Uh, but I will tell you, I don't usually get into those discussions because I think the discussion of nature is so amazing. When you really understand the three-legged stool that she uses, and I tell people this, NASA – uses light water magnetism as the three thermodynamic variables they look for for alien life all throughout the universe. And the funny thing is, you know, not to keep harping on this, but I think you'll get a charge out of it, where the government is subsidizing Elon Musk to go to Mars. That's a dead red planet with a <laughs> desert, no magnetic field, and water that's capped at the, uh, the ice poles. And I'm like, why in the hell do we want to go to a planet that clearly isn't a spaceship that's designed for us. Um, right. But therein, therein lies the issue. The, everything the government does is not what I would call congruent. I think it's just a matter of saying, hey, we were able to do this. It's engineering. But it just doesn't make sense to me why we would do that. And we do the same things in medicine. We focus in on things that we think matter. So what am I referring to? Uh, we spend 98% of the NIH budget on RNA and DNA, all the study tied to what Watson and Crick found. And it turns out, we know from the Human Genome Project and all the new epigenetic things that are out probably in the mid 90s that it turns out that the hardware, which is RNA and DNA, is run by software. And the software right. is controlled by the mitochondria. That's right. the epigenetic program. But guess what? You spend 1% of the federal government budget for research on mitochondria. And, and when you really think about it, say we take a car. That would be like saying, hey, let's ignore the engine of the Ferrari and let's just keep, make sure it's nice and polished and it's got armor all on the tires. You think that car is going to continue to perform at 225 miles an hour if you completely ignore the engine? Don't tune it up. Don't change the oil. But guess what? That's the mindset right. of the bureaucrats right. in D.C. And it should be no shocked to anybody why I'm pissed off and incredulous about this on the medicine side. Well, I'm really pissed off when you actually understand what's going on with our money in this country. Right, right. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial. 
for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. I mean, I want to go deeper with you. So, you know, the, the entity, the emergent system, interdimensional, you know, puppet wizard behind the curtain. I want to know who that is, Jack. Uh, I, I mean, if I knew, I would tell you. I, I actually <laughs> did, I did a webinar. I really did. I did a webinar with about this topic, and I will tell you what I called it because um, it was pretty deep. It said, is God light and is light God? And – uh I made a pretty compelling case in the webinar that it is. And that's why I told you that the cosmic wand of what's mm -hmm. on this planet, right? terrestrial sunlight, if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, is a very small piece, you know, of that spectrum. And it makes you realize that you think about all the most amazing things. Like when you were in Cabo, you think about the lobsters down there and the great white sharks and this and that. And you're like, it's, it is freaking amazing that we have these life forms on our planet and they, they come from the smallest part of the spectrum. And this part of the spectrum we know is not present even on all the other planets in our own solar system. Why? Because we have different magnetospheres that filter the solar plasma that comes because the shit, the sun kicks out at us right. is that whole thing. Every time you look at a physics book, it's the whole kit and caboodle. Like if you're a really, really religious person and you read the Bible, uh, Genesis 1, 1 to 1, uh, 10, 111. What's the story all about? It's about light. So I always tell my members, uh, especially my religious members, this is the problem with organized religion. Um, they get the story right. It's about light, but they don't tell you about the recipe. You got to figure the recipe out. That's what our job is on this planet. That's predominantly what I've been doing probably the last 15 years on most of the interviews that I've done because people are fascinated by how light works. They're fascinated by quantum mechanics. They're fascinated by that whole branch of science. And, you know, a lot of time it's been bastardized in different places, but I look at it as still a good factor because I want people to know that when you plug in to the decentralized network, that is what we're talking about. Dude, we win. We do well. Our thinking improves, our body improves, we start to tap things like you said, when you went away in 2019 and you started to tap uh, your physical side, I should say left your physical side and started to think about your God, spiritual yeah. side yeah. And, and your emotional side. And the thing is, I understand where you're coming from when you say that, because as a neurosurgeon, you know, being at the top of my field, I had a focus for 50 years of my life on the left hemisphere. Yeah, that was course. the part that allowed me to do this. And what did I let atrophy? the right side. And I'm going to tell you probably for the last 15 years, I've been focused in on the side that I've atrophied. And it sounds like you're kind of going through the same process same now, thing, right? Yeah. At 50 years old. And you're like, dude, I've missed so much of the story. And I want to add this story because when you don't have all pieces of the puzzle, it's kind of like when you paint, you may have black and brown on the background, but sure. there's nothing in the foreground that actually shows you where the light is. And I tell people the transformation that I went to 15 years ago, it was kind of like my medical career was all the black background. And I tell people that the, the space on a canvas is space and time. Exactly. But what happens, the foreground is where the action of the light is. And when you start to paint that part, all of a sudden that pops. And when that pops, you begin to realize that the dark uh, backgrounds of paintings just in our life also form the space that ultimately our light's going to fill. And the thing is, everybody gets this light bulb moment at some point in their life where they say, you know what, what I've been doing, it's been good, but I need to add something. There's something else in this recipe that's mixing. 
Sometimes that little splash of white in the right place gives people the idea. Oh, wow, look at that. The light's traveling from right to left in this picture. Well, it's no different than it is in our life. You know, when you right. look at something that Michelangelo painted or Da Vinci paints, and then you look at something like your daughter paints, you look at it and go, yeah, there's definitely a difference here. But, you know, the funny thing is she still has the capability to do this. It may be atrophied in her, but it doesn't mean when she grows up and gets more experience or gets lit up by an experience that she has at a, a spiritual place that that can change, that she can't turn into, you know, uh, uh, an artist that blossoms at 50, at 60, at 70 right. years old. And I think right. it's our mindset who says, you know, when we start getting gray beards and, and gray hair, that no, we can't. I don't focus in on I can't. I focus in on what I can do. And I think the experiences that we all go through, your mind's got to be open like a parachute. And it sounds like whatever happened to you down on your trip actually triggered something for you. And for me, I think you, I think we all become better people when we're connected to the whole. Another right. big Unity. tie here to what we're Unity. talking about, that yeah. decentralized network. Remember, neurons in the brain, if I cut them out, they look just like the universe. Exactly. And you know what? That's the example of the fractal universe, that decentralized network. When you look at like trees behind us, there's a fractal pattern in the tree, in the branch, and how it handles water. Nature has these things in, but the thing is, it has has it in our own life too. And I think, you know, if you live a life based on say just the physical or say the financial and you don't have the spiritual, you're missing some of the juice that's left in the grape. And I don't think you can optimize yourself no. unless you're willing to have all those key nutrients inside you so that you can continue to grow. And I think the people that don't, those are the people that actually struggle as they age. You, I mean, again, you're saying so much in such a little amount of time. It's amazing. Um, are you familiar with the works of Walter Russell? Yes. I'm talking about right? Absolutely. Of course, of course you are. So am I. I'm a huge uh, student and disciple of Walter Russell. So, you know, everything you were saying about the secret of light, phenomenal text. I actually have on my wall over here, which you can't see, I have the wave and the octave wave, which, as you know, he was painting, painting that. Uh -huh. So, um, like uh, my chakras, uh, uh, there's a very resonant frequency that's happening between us right now, which is awesome. I, it's, there's no coincidence, right. In the universe, especially when you're talking about light in the fields of light and the waves and, you know, the standing waves and the electrical that's, particles that's, that, yeah, that's, that's coalescing what, that's, to form our physical what, bodies right now. <laughs> that's what, that's what quantum entanglement's all about. It's about yeah. two particles can be far apart, but yet. When there's molecular resonance, they you spin up, I spin down. Uh, exactly. And I, I really believe that the things that you hear about in a physics lab about entanglement, when they do it with a photon and some atoms, the same thing happens between us. Why? Jay, you're made of light water magnetism. You're made of atoms just like I am. To say that what happens at the nanoscopic or microscopic level doesn't have at the macroscopic level between two human beings is, is to deny nature. Right. And to me, that's ridiculous. Amazing things, man. You're saying here um, a lot of stuff uh, that I would like to talk about, but we'll just keep going deeper on the crypto and, the, you know, just the quantum aspect of health and finance. Um, you know, I always say that, and you already kind of said it, but I always say that, you know, it's imperative. Okay. So let me take a step back. Most people, and you, again, you said this kind of, most people don't ever give a shit about their health until they lose their health, right? That's just the facts, right? Now, obviously, guys like you and I are looking into optimizing our health and we talk about it. And this is what we do. But, you know, I love this, you know, aspect of things that you're talking about where, you know, it, it, quantum health and, 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 and financial go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, I love this approach, but like, you know, how do you tell an average, and again, I don't have really an average listening audience and you're not really talking to average people very much, but how do you tell an average person who is 35, who's hustling to get $10 million in the bank as a successful entrepreneur, um, that their health from a standpoint of like should be their first priority versus, you know, putting that uh, onus and that physicality into and the energy and frequency of building that business. Like, what do you, what do you, how do you say that to them? I, I tell them very simply that these issues tie back to time. Uh, anybody who doesn't understand right. that health and wealth are linked that it fundamentally comes back to time and time is created. So one thing Einstein said, 
that time is not a physical property of the universe. It's actually something that can be created. And when you jump down the physics of it, it turns out that time is actually tied to light fundamentally. Right. Light creates right. time. That freaking that freaks people out when they hear it. <laughs> and and the thing is, when you explain the physics to them, then I go on to say to people, look, if you're 35, do you know that in my profession in medicine, that um, the number one cause of bankruptcy is actually medical bankruptcy from, right. from bad health. So say if you are an entrepreneur, is 35 years old, Jay, and all of a sudden you come down with cancer. Um, just say you do it because uh, you're out working out in the gym at all hours of the night to get ripped for a bodybuilding show. I mean, I don't know if you know him. He used to be one of my good friends. It's Charles Poliquin. Charles, I love I, Charles and I were friends, dude. It, it, uh, his, did, quote, had, his quote, he still has the greatest quote in the history of nutrition. He said, you get your carbs when you deserve them. Correct. Well, I, I say the same thing about Bitcoin. You get the price of Bitcoin you deserve. If you're too late <laughs> to the game, you're going to pay more money. But Charles is a good friend of mine, and I had many conversations with him love Charles. About, about his routines. And I said, Charles, you give good lip service to you know outside stuff and things like that. But every time I see you, you're inside working out in the gym. I said, dude, you can look like Adonis on the outside, but you can die if you don't understand how important this quantum biology is for the circadian mechanism in your body. And you know, you and I both know what happened to him. You know, he made a great looking corpse. And it's I feel like it's my duty to carry that on and let people know just because you look good or just because you look bad doesn't mean that everything's cooking or is great on the inside. You need to understand what constructs us. And I think if I can return value to people, like my return on equity to them is that I want to give them the gift of time so they can understand it from the biologic side and on the financial side. And I think truthfully uh, money is worthless uh, to all of us, if we have no time, like Charles could exactly. have all the money in the world, he's dead. So exactly. what good is it? And that 35 year old that you gave me in the analogy, I'm going to say, if, if you are going to die, just say he's a, a lawyer in a courtroom and you have a heart attack. Uh, do you want to die without ever tapping the spiritual side of your life? Do you want to die not having some of the best relationships with people? Do you, do you not want to be a mentor to the people in your circle of six who you may be leaving stuff to like your kids or your wife or your girlfriend or, you know, your best friend. Do you not want to tell them, Hey man, I really care about you. Here's the reasons I care about you. Dude, time is the most valuable asset we have. And the reason I say that, if you don't have health, you don't have time. And mm -hmm. if you don't have time and you don't have health, wealth is a secondary gain issue. Right. Right. And it's funny, right? Because if we get into the quantum entangling aspect of time, it doesn't exist other than the, in this linear reality, because it's a point, you know, between two, two areas or two aspects of our existence. So yes, you are 100% right. I mean, I, I, we, I mean, we could go a lot of different ways, a lot of different directions. It's like, you're so learned and so, you know, aware of all this stuff. And I do want to focus, continue, you know, continue to talking about the aspect of this quantum health versus this quantum financial. One of your points is decentralization and we've already talked about it, but you know, I want to ask you this question because this is my belief. It's more of an awareness than a belief, a knowing as Walter Russell would say, uh, th this, you know, whatever the dark side is, the left-hand path, the cabal, the elites, whoever the fuck they are, bro. Uh, -huh. uh, they are so beholden to these materialistic federal reserve, you know, fiat currency enslavement debt monetary system that it seems like right now, Jack, they won't let go. And they're, as you said, they're flooding the world. You know, they're, they're, again, they're so attached to their systems that are all just worthless at this point. They all need to fold. I mean, you know, my wife and I own a residential real estate company and we're looking at, you know, the nonsense that's going on in residential real estate right now. As you know, people are paying $300,000 over asking. Uh -huh. So we're, you know, this system is, it is collapsing. It is unraveling, but it's like not happening at the rate and speed that most of us who are highly aware, you know, would like it to happen. Like, do, do you agree that that's really what's happening right now? That they're just holding on for dear life? Well, I, I would actually tell you, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of teaching lately on Clubhouse and 
Uh, I've been really popular in the crypto rooms. And I would tell you, out of all the guys that are in these rooms, and I'm talking a lot of Wall Street types, they believe that the government's going to be able to kick the can down the road for more years. I don't. No, I, think, I don't either. I think no. the next step is it's going to happen sooner than people think. And I think um, the key thing is we have $165 trillion in unfunded liabilities. That's for right. people who don't know what that means. That's your Social Security. That's yes, your CMS payments to doctors. And that's the pension funds. <coughs> so God the amount God. that we have means that we can't uh, pay this off. There's no amount of tax money that will let us pay it off. So what does the government have to do now? They have to debase the currency. What does that mean? What's another term for that? That's what inflation is. It's a tax that right. even billionaires have to pay. See, yep. Warren Buffett and Trump, you know, the left made a lot of fun of Trump that he didn't pay any taxes. But here's the, the real key story. The 10 top billionaires for the Democratic Party also didn't pay taxes. And the right. reason why the tax system is heavily favored to generate the wealth effect because of the Federal Reserve. Right. So when you realize how the game is played, there's only one tax that the really wealthy are subject to that they don't like. And that's inflation. And now we have monetary inflation at 40% level from January to April from the numbers that we've got printed. So why can't they let it go on? See, when the rich start to get inconvenienced, then we start to have problems. And that's the reason why. What's the symptom that you mentioned earlier? The reason you as a real estate investor have people paying $300,000 over ask is because right now money is worth 95% less than it was exactly. 10 or 15 years ago. So there Ab is no monopoly money. Exactly. Right. right. And the thing is, eventually that's going to end. Why? Because the inflation rate, the next step after where we are right now is hyperinflation. That's what happened right. in Germany in 23. The Weimar it's Republic. Happened. Yeah. Right. right. And it's, what, it's also what happened is happening right now in uh, Nigeria and Mozambique, even in Lebanon to as a point of reference. But the key is most people don't believe, especially lazy Americans who are comfortable don't think because we're the global reserve currency that it can happen here. I got some bad news for you. Yeah, it's, my, it's on the way. Yeah. Correct. And all the symptoms of this sick patient are there. And I look at it as a physician. When I see the vital signs of fiat and compare them to, say, the Bitcoin network, I what I'm seeing, I'm seeing medicine focusing on RNA and DNA and not on mitochondrial DNA. And when I see that, I feel like I have a duty to come on shows like this and explain to people my perspective because I I want you to know to get through this economic reset, you have to have air in your life raft. And it turns out that air in your life raft is Bitcoin. In fact, Bitcoin is a vaccination against the policies of your government. How's that? The real big issue here is how in the 1800s, the way we got the Fed, J.P. Morgan's dad, told J.P. Morgan before 1910 that if you want to control a country, you have to control their monetary policy. Right. If you do that, you're effectively the military and you're the president. Right. And it turns out J.P. Morgan took it to, to bed. He actually bailed out the Fed in, in the 1910s. That's why we got the Fed. And then mm -hmm. he did it again in the Great Depression to do some other things where he helped the Fed. You have to realize now that idea that 19th century and 20th century ideas change. Now, that those who control monetary policy, it is important. It turns out now it's a data-driven world because we live in a technocracy. So data has re now replaced uh, monetary energy. So the key is, how do you control the data? So my belief, the real issue, is surveillance capitalism is what this is all about. And it's They look at us like idiots that they can farm so that we can make money for them in perpetuity and they're going to hope that we're dumbed down because they got us addicted to blue light devices, Netflix, and things like that. And, you know, COVID, I, I said this to one of my members today. It was a hilarious comment. We're sitting at breakfast. And I, I said, do you realize how foolish it is for people to say, let's not use money, let's use debit cards? Do they not think that you have to touch the debit card, put it in the machine, and still touch the button? Right. How is that different from using money? And when you think about the stupidity on the biologic side, then you have to ask yourself the next question. Why did they really do that? Are they trying to get us used to maybe not using money because they've got a plan for a central bank digital token and a stable coin? Well, guess what, right. Jay? You may not know this. 
Today, Powell was out and said, by the summertime, they want to have a central bank digital coin that ready coin. to go. So what are they going to do? My opinion, they're going to do what FDR did in 33 when he went and confiscated gold. They're going to do, they're going to go in our bank accounts. They're going to take our fiat. They're going to use that fiat to pay the 30 trillion debt off. Then they're going to turn around. Hopefully Jay and Jack don't get too upset. And they're going to give us fake money where they can see where Jay and I go on vacation, where we go food shopping, where what? we do this and we do that. And then what are they going to do? They're going to control that and they're going to monetize that for their own benefits. And in many ways, that actually may be more effective than actually controlling um, the flow of money in an economy because they've built a new world. It's no longer an industrial world. It's a technology world. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you left off. They're going to take the 20. There's going to be a 20% VIG though. <laughs> well, I, you know what? There probably, there probably will be, but it, it, like I, the reason I mentioned Dalio's book is Dalio, when he wrote the book, said that one of the big risks of trying to pull this kind of economic reset off without a war, he said with a war, it gets everybody uh, working in unison. When you try to do it the way they're doing it, you are taking a big risk that at least part of the population is going to realize that they've been fleeced by the government. Right. You risk right. a revolutionary war like we had with King George. And I'm going to tell you, based on what we saw on January 6th, I think the risk That's of that is. is higher than people think. Yeah, because no, I think you're, I think you're 100 percent right. I don't mean to cut you off. I mean you're going here a million miles an hour with amazing information, but um, the amount of assets you have, I I tell you know single mothers with with kids on Clubhouse all the time, almost every day, that if you understand the organism that is Bitcoin, if you put three four thousand dollars in Bitcoin right now today, in three or four years it'll be worth over a million dollars. You tell me where you're going to get that return on equity in any real estate, unless it's at the Hamptons, um, you're not going to get it in the stock market. You're not going right. to get it in the bond market. You're not getting it in any asset. But guess what? The more the government screws up, the higher Bitcoin goes. And when you own Bitcoin, this is the craziest part of the story, my friend. You almost hope they make mistakes. Right. Why? Because you realize they're putting air in the raft for you. Because you know they can't get out of the way. My last question for you, which I think is important for people, if they're not already taking advantage of cryptocurrency, obviously you're a big Bitcoin guy. What is the simplest way for a person to invest $10,000 in Bitcoin right now? Uh, go to swanbitcoin.com. You can put it all in. Right now, you should put it all in at the price it's at. Wait, uh, what was it? Swan, S-W? Swanbitcoin.com. Swan they have a program where you can dollar cost average in even 10 bucks. Uh, but I would tell you to go all in. The other th reason I like these guys is not only they are an exchange, they only deal with Bitcoin, but there's a guy that works from there. He's their, I believe, COO. His name's Jan Pritzker. He write, uh, wrote a book for 120 pages that's written for like fifth graders that explains Bitcoin to you. It's called Invest, Invest in Bitcoin or Inventing Bitcoin. They give it to you free. As uh, soon as you uh, sign up for an account, when you sign up for an account, you do not have to uh, put any money in it. You know, if you want to wait, but this book, they'll send you by PDF. You read it. This book is spectacular. Nice. Now, there's other things you need to learn, but I'm going to tell you, this is one of the few things that I say to people, and I don't want this to be controversial. I'm telling you, if you have 10 grand right now, go put it in, learn about Bitcoin later. It's the same thing that I would tell nice. you. Go sit in the sun. Go drink deuterium depleted water. Go to Mexico and get a good magnetic flux for your <laughs> deuterium depleted water. There you go. And the thing is, you, most people don't want to learn how those things work. Just do them. If you do them, you're going to get health and wealth and you're going to get time. And ultimately, that's what this is all about. I mean, I love coming and turning people into mitochondriacs because. I want them to, to value time better than they value it right now. And when you do get time, I think it makes sense. Bro, you are an amazing human being. Um, I'm, I'm, before the show ends, I want to get your cell phone number uh, so we can text each other. We can talk because there's a lot of ways. Do you know Victor Sagalovsky or uh, Robert? Which one of the guys? Because you're yeah, when you immediately said deuterium depleted water, who, who are you friends with? Both of those guys? 
No, I'm not, I don't know who those guys are. Oh, so Victor is the owner of drinklightwater.com. Do you have, you have deuterium depleted water too? Oh yeah. I have, I have it directly from Romania. Ah, from the factory. Right. Okay, cool. Okay. Well then that you and I need to talk about that, uh, bro. Amazing. Absolutely mind blowing. Thank you so much for coming on uh, for people who want to work with you, connect with you, join your group. Like what is the best way they can do that? Well, they can uh, visit my website, jackcruise.com. I have forms there that have all this stuff on finances link. Uh, if they want to become a member of my site, cruise at destin.com. If they just want a sample of Jack Cruise, just dip your toe in. I have a Patreon blog. Right now I'm in the middle of the Bitcoin series. There's 25 blogs out on Bitcoin. So if you want to learn about Bitcoin, I'll teach you. Uh, that's um, uh, patreon.com backslash Dr. Jack Cruise. Then my latest project, uh, I started a TV show with a, a, a group of people out of uh, Canada. It's called Quantum Health TV, where we take bits and pieces of quantum biology and do like a 30 to 45 minute show. You can find that at quantumhealthtv.com. Uh, it's pretty cool. And, and if you Google my name and your disease or my name and your problem, you're almost guaranteed you're going to find something. It would take you probably 10 years to read everything that I've written out there. I've got free articles on LinkedIn. I've got free articles on the Jack Cruz site that are old about leptin biology and things like that. But the new things that are out there that probably Jay would dig, uh, I have a quantum thermodynamics series that teaches you about the quantum thermodynamics of mitochondria and how we really work. I think there's 28 blogs on that and it's all on Patreon. So I'm going to have you back and we're going to talk about what you can do right now to massively improve your mitochondrial health. But a uh, bonus question. How, how about we, how about we answer that right now? Cause it's okay. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, but I mean, it's, it's, it's not fair see to you. The to sunrise. Five minutes. See the sunrise every day. <laughs> Just sun gaze every morning. That's I know, I'm but I, I want to go deeper with you, but uh bonus question, how much money you got in Bitcoin right now, bro? Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the answer that I tell everybody else. <laughs> Never tell people about your stack because you puts a target on your back. Like you Not and I don't really have a target but, but on I, our back. Jay, 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 I will give you, I will give you this answer though, to be provocative, maybe for the next time I'm irresponsibly long. Irresponsibly long. Well, don't forget the great words of Jim Craver, right? Pigs get fat. Hogs get slaughtered. Not when, not when the Fed is printing forty percent monetary inflation. <laughs> Man, you are amazing. This is definitely one of the best podcasts I think the Jay Campbell podcast has ever done, and uh, I really truly appreciate you coming on. So, guys, of course, support Jack. I mean, there was all these different links which I can't give you right now, but go to his primary website. I think it was Cruise. What was Jack it? Cruise yeah, oh, it was yeah, Jack I got that one. Dot com, and to become a member, if you if you want to really go down the rabbit hole with me where I teach you quantum mechanics of the physics of organisms. Uh, that's cruise at destin.com. And that's yeah, where I am right now. Awesome, brother. Well, listen, I truly appreciate you again. Thank you for coming on. So guys, of course, support this amazing person, Dr. Jack Cruz. Again, honor to have you on here. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.